Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, I'm Stress in a Box over on TikTok and yes, I have a YouTube channel and this is it. Um, I kind of wanted to make this video on my YouTube channel instead of doing like a 15 part TikTok series about what happened this past week because if you follow me on any of my other social media, you know that three of my axolotls died this week. So I do want to say before I get into this video that I have talked to my vet and she said that my husbandry is fantastic, um, that she doesn't think that this was what caused this was anything that I had done and that this was just like a freak incident that just happened. Um, I also want to add that the tank that is directly behind me is my eyeless axolotl tank and when I am near their tank talking they assume they're going to be fed so if you see them zooming across the top of the tank that is why. Uh, with that being said sometimes you can do everything right and things can still go wrong and this was one of those situations. So with this bacterial infection the first thing I kind of want to walk you through is the sequence of events that happened so what 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 I had to live through. This all happened between Saturday morning and Tuesday, um, Tuesday afternoon. And it's still technically ongoing right now, um, but I feel like I have it under enough control that I can now openly talk about it and then fill you guys in on what's going on. Saturday, um, as a lot of you guys know, I actually went to a local animal expo. I was a vendor there, I had a table, um, and I had been advertising for days that Caligo was going to be there. Caligo, my beautiful split mosaic. Um, was going to be at this expo in the show tank for you guys to meet and take pictures of and all that stuff. Um, and then on the day of the expo, he was not there. But Saturday morning, um, I woke up and Cal was floating. Um, I really didn't think that much of it. Uh, sometimes they get an air bubble. Uh, sometimes when they're constipated, they float. So that was honestly what I thought it was. Um, and when I kind of, you know, excuse you kind of just poked him that morning he responded um, and went to the bottom of the tank and all of that when I got home that evening he seemed to be okay but um, I did tub him as a precaution um, bye friend and he seemed to be doing better he was showing less signs of stress and overall was just kind of relaxing so I thought like oh it must be like an air bubble or he's constipated and the deep tank not being able to touch the bottom was probably stressing him out so that was what I assumed it was um, went to bed that night not really thinking anything of it, um, kept him tubbed and woke up the next morning. Uh, Caligo seemed to be okay, um, but when I went to check on my female tank, because in the morning I kind of do a round, I turn on all the lights in my tank, check to make sure everybody's okay. Um, when I went to go do like my morning routine, um, I found one of my females in my female tank in my living room was dead. Uh, she was perfectly fine the evening before. Uh, nothing was wrong with her. She was sunshines and daisies. So when I found her that morning and she was dead, I was like, what? War was always one of my more sensitive axolotls. I swear she spent more time in a tub than she did in her actual tank because even when the water parameters were chef's kiss, uh, she still hated life. So <laughs> she just was not, she was very finicky, very, very sensitive axolotl. So I thought maybe you know, that was part of it. Like maybe she just wasn't meant to have a long life. Uh, so I really didn't think anything of it at that point in time. I was like, okay, it's freak acts, freak thing, nothing, you know, to, it's definitely not connected to Caligo. They're in two different rooms and two different tanks, it's nothing. So Sunday continued on and I checked on Caligo again later in the evening um, and I noticed that Caligo at that point was also dead as well. So at this point, it starts clicking in my brain that, oh my God, something's actually going on, something's happening. Um, I now realized, okay, he was, he hadn't just swallowed an air bubble or constipated, like there was actually something wrong here. So I start freaking out, went in here. So the tank that Caligo was actually in is this tank down here on the bottom. Um, I don't even have the light on or anything on in this tank, just, I've been leaving it black, um, completely turned off. So came in here, checked this bottom tank and noticed that Loki, one of my lightning bugs, um, was also now floating. And I just, I remember when I saw that, I just automatically started crying. Like I was like, oh my God, like I'm gonna lose the whole tank. I'm gonna lose Caligo, I'm gonna lose Loki and I'm gonna lose Cookie Dough, I'm gonna lose the whole damn tank. Check the girls tank, they all seem to be okay. Um, when I had found war that morning, I had actually done a partial water change, checked the parameters, all that stuff. 
um, the parameters were good. I did a partial water change anyway um, and all that stuff in that tank that morning. So my other females were fine and I did take Storm out, which is one of my other girls out as a precaution um, just because she is also kind of a little bit more sensitive to things. So I took her out of that tank as a precaution, uh, but I took everybody out of this tank behind me, um, this bottom tank behind me and tubbed them all. Loki um, at that point was floating just like Caligo had been floating and he was actually starting to bloat. Caligo didn't actually bloat, um, at least not that I could notice, uh, but Loki was, was visibly bloated um, and he, when he was trying to swim he was kind of just doing this um and he just for the most part just he was sick i could tell he was very sick but uh that morning when i checked on him it was fine by that evening he was floating and bloating and looked like this so of course i'm like oh crap i need to call my vet i need to get him to a vet he needs to go to the vet um unfortunately at that point my vet that i go to they were closed <laughs> for the night and then i do have a 24-hour exotic vet that um i use for like emergencies but because of the pandemic they were also closed so the next morning comes around um at that point caligo has passed away he's gone now um loki was still alive um was not looking great but he was still alive so i called my vet my normal vet right away and said hey i need to bring loki and i think he has a bacterial infection this is what's going on can you please get me an appointment today and of course they did they got me in um for that afternoon took loki in my vet was also in agreement that whatever this was looked like a bacterial infection based on the symptoms, but neither one of us were confident that Loki was going to make it through to the next day, even with the medication that she had given us. Um, she prescribed Baytril, and I'm going to put this on the screen because I don't know how the heck to say this. It's like mizitavol. Mm, I'm. It's totally. I. I I don't, I don't have it in front of me, so that's probably entirely wrong. Unfortunately, I uh, did not make it through that night, even with the medications. Um, so I woke up on Tuesday morning and had lost Loki as well. Uh, it was not fun. It was very upsetting. Um, I was very attached to Loki. That one was probably the one that hurt the most. Uh, you guys had actually made it so I could get Loki. If you remember um, when I first got my first Firefly, which was Thor, they were like that big. They were tiny little guys a few months ago. Um, I got Thor and everybody was like, oh, you need to get the reciprocal one. You need to get the reciprocal one. So I was like, okay, it, they're expensive, but if you guys want to help me get it, go for it. And you guys raised a ton of money for me to get, to get Loki. And I was also able to get Blinken, who is in this tank somewhere. He's on the other side. Um, I was able to get Blinken right here because of you guys. Uh, that morning I also um, had noticed that cookie dough was starting to show um, some symptoms as well. Um, very early symptoms, so started her on medication right away too. I think cookie dough is a her. She's too young to tell, but I think she's a her. We're gonna call cookie dough a her. So cookie dough, um, as of right now, is still doing okay. Uh, she's on medication, she is eating now, um, she's no longer doing barrel, barrel roll, she's no longer floating. So I'm confident that Cookie Dough is going to get over the hill and be okay. Um, and my other axolotls at this point in time are all doing fine as well. Um, I'm still doing, out of paranoia, I'm still doing, you know, pacing every few hours to just check every single tank. I work from home so I can do that. Um, just to make sure everybody's okay and as of right now it seems that everybody is doing fine so now in this next kind of section of the video i want to go into um what my vet said what we figured out was a diagnosis what this bacteria was and how we figured out what it was the day that loki went into the vet i did have my vet do a culture on him to figure out what bacteria this was and then after uh, loki passed away i did have her do an autopsy on him as well he we went to the vet on monday um we got the culture done uh, he passed away on Tuesday, um, called my vet that morning. My vet that I use wasn't in, um, and she's the one that they wanted to have do the autopsy because she had the most experience with my type of animal. Um, so she wasn't in, so they told me to basically preserve the body and bring him in on Wednesday morning. So that was what I did. So Wednesday night, um, I got a call from my vet with the results of the autopsy, which basically just kind of confirmed that it was a bacterial infection. Um, so he had necrosis of the liver, he had an enlarged spleen, and he had a lot of fluid buildup in his abdomen, um, which had caused the bloating, obviously. Uh, so all of these were basically in tune with a bacterial infection. 
as we already knew. So that was really all she could tell me was just confirm that, but she did um, say that she already had an idea of what the bacterial infection was based on the results of the autopsy and one she had done in the past. Uh, so already at that point, she was fairly certain that it was a bacterial similar to Aramonas, which Aramonas is normally what causes red leg in amphibians. So if anybody's out there who has had frogs or salamanders or anything like that, um, you probably know what red leg is. If you don't know what red leg is, please research it. It's one of the more common um, bacterial infections in amphibians, at least that from my knowledge. Um, anyway, I feel like that's the bacterial infection I always hear about. Of course, she didn't want to diagnose that until we got the results of the culture. So Friday, um, this was actually lined up perfectly because I went to go pick up Loki um, from my vet's office and they got the results back while I was on the way there. So uh, they were actually able to come out and talk to me when they, um, you know, gave me Loki. So my vet actually came out to my car and she spoke with me because, you know, pandemic, couldn't go inside. Uh, so she actually came out to my car and gave me the results from the culture. So the results of the culture showed that there was three bacterias that were present um, on Loki at the time. One of them, pretty standard bacteria. Another one wasn't too low of numbers for it to be harmful. Um, it was also pretty standard bacteria. And the third one um, was Pseudomonas. Um, and Pseudomonas was what she was fairly certain had done this. So Pseudomonas is similar to Aramonas. Um, it is... Um, basically in any water system. So it's very popular to find in tanks and find in water systems. Uh, the thing with Pseudomonas is if it gets in a high enough concentration within a tank, um, it can be deadly. Or if it finds its way into the bloodstream of the animal through some type of wound, um, it's also deadly then. Um, so Pseudomonas is what caused everything. Um, at that point, we're like, well, it's already in all of our tanks. You know, what, what can we do to prevent it in the other tanks? And she basically just told me to continue what I'm doing. <laughs> I do weekly water changes on every single tank. Um, I also do um, check my water parameters multiple times a week. Uh, currently, I'm doing it every day at the suggestion of my vet just to make sure, you know, there's no spikes and water parameters or issues like that it was just very nice to hear from my vet who has all the experience with aquatics like she treats goldfish guys like that she's she's amazing um it was very nice to hear from her that this was not my fault because i had been blaming myself continuously uh since it started happening uh, it was just a freak incident that happened all of my other axolotls at this point are appearing to be a-okay except for cookie dough who is still undergoing treatment but i literally paused and went and checked on them while I was filming this video and they were they were doing good. So fingers crossed that this is it. This is everything we have to deal with and that cookie dough is going to get better and everything's going to be fine. So as I said earlier, sometimes you can be doing everything right and things can still go wrong and this is just one of those situations where that happened. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment below.